Today, I wanted to talk about a campaign that I started two years ago to feature successful women in Yellowknife. The campaign is called Our Trailblazers, and this is what it looks like. This is Letha, and we featured her just three weeks ago. But before I tell you more, I have a question. Who here has ever been to a conference and wondered, where are all the women? <laughs> when I attended a conference a few years ago, and I saw the lineup of male speakers, I was really taken aback. Both at home and in my career, I've always had strong women on my team to lead the way forward. But attending that conference got me thinking. We all have such different perspectives on gender balance and diversity. This is my mom with my kids. And until May of this year, my mom worked in the HR department for a large corporation. She really is a self-made woman. She joined that company right out of high school. She worked her way up and she finished her career as HR director in this plant that employs a thousand people. And when I ask my mom what she thinks a diverse team is, her perspective is so different from mine. So she recently retired and before she did, I asked, Mama, what do you think of the management team that you work with? And she said, great, two out of 10 managers are women. Now to her, that's a balanced team or at least progress. But to me, it really isn't. Now, I want you to take a look at this photo. Without actually counting, what do you think the ratio of women to men in this photo is? Raise your hand if you think it's 50%. Now, raise your hand if you think it's 30%. <laughs> the answer is 30%. Now, if there were any of you who thought you saw a balanced crowd, you are not alone. The point is, gender imbalance is invisible to most people. That means that when people see a crowd, they overestimate the number of women and they overestimate their speech. According to the Gina Davis Institute on gender in media, men outnumber women two to one in family movies when it comes to leads, screen time, and speaking time. Yet viewers see a balanced representation because that is what we have learned over the years is acceptable and normal representation. 30% are women. Coincidentally or not, that is the same percentage as women that can be found in senior leadership positions in Canada. And when you look at the statistics up here, women are still not equally represented in the workforce. According to a study that was done in partnership between LeanIn.org and worldwide management consulting firm McKinsey & Company, while the majority of university graduates are women, fewer women are hired than men, fewer women are promoted than men, and Statistics Canada shows that women still make less than men. Women are also underrepresented in media, in children's books, in economic news articles, on boards, in leadership, and as experts speaking and quoted on matters. Now, I have an MBA, and I know that women are an important part of society and of building an economy. There's no need to look any further than our own Franklin Avenue here in Yellowknife, where so many women run or own successful businesses from one end to the next. Yet I see that women are significantly underrepresented. There's this imbalance in who is represented and the 30% comes back way too often. This is Gina Davis, and for those of you who don't know her, Gina Davis is an award-winning American actress, film producer, and writer. She's most known from her role in Thelma and Louise, and if you're like me, you might also know her as Dr. Herman in Grey's Anatomy. Now, when Gina Davis had her first child, she sat down and she watched movies with her daughter, and she also saw the underrepresentation of women and girls on screens. Not only were there so few of them, they also didn't seem to contribute much, except for being eye candy and sidekicks. And when Gina Davis brought this up to the people in the industry, her friends, they said, no, no, that's been covered. Just because they had one or two people up on the screen, they thought they had the whole gender covered. 
And it prompted Gina Davis into action. She went on and she started her own institute, committed to researching gender prevalence in family entertainment. Now, I tell this story because I can really identify with Gina Davis, just like her, when I had my first child, I also saw the underrepresentation of women out there. I sat down and I watched shows with my daughter and we read her books and I heard the aspirations that the people around me had for my child. And my eyes also opened up to the imbalance in representation and I saw it like I never had before. So it prompted me into action as well. So in the years after I had my first child, my daughter, and I started my life as a parent, I also started the Trailblazers campaign to make women and their successes more visible. And today, our Trailblazers is a campaign by the city of Yellowknife to celebrate Yellowknife women who are excelling in their fields, to show what success looks like. They are women in business, women in the arts, in nonprofits. They are new and long-time business owners. They disrupt the status quo in spite of the gender gap statistics and the unequal representation. And we know that our trailblazers play a critical role in positioning our city and in breaking ground towards building a dynamic economy. Now today, our trailblazers is an established campaign and it's been well received. But looking back to two years ago, how easy was it starting a campaign that celebrates women exclusively? This photo, it was taken a few weeks ago at the Yellowknife Chamber of Commerce's Business Awards Gala. It was the week after the 2018 municipal election, taken in the same room as we are today. And when you look at this photo, it might seem that starting a campaign that celebrates women must have been a really easy win for me. But looking back to two years ago when I started this campaign, City Hall looked really different. Our senior management team was far from balanced. All directors, except for one, were men. So here was my challenge. From the perspective of a communications and economic development officer, how do I create opportunities to represent more women without alienating half the population? I wanted to create a campaign that celebrates successful women. But the last thing I wanted to do was lose the men in the room and preach to the choir on this one. How do I create opportunities to inspire others when we don't have a gender balance at our own table? Those were just some of the challenges that we had to work through, and there was a lot of working through before Trailblazers became the campaign that it is today. And one of those challenges was coming up with a name. Originally, I wanted to call this campaign Against the Odds. And while it is true that these women do succeed against the odds, after all, the statistics are still not in women's favor, it also sounds very negative and not like a celebration at all. So then I thought, okay, let's keep this simple, women in business. But then I worried and wondered, would men be running from a title like that? Would they even be bothered reading the profiles? And that's when we arrived at Trailblazers. And I don't know if many of you know the traditional meaning behind trailblazers or breakers, but when indigenous people in the north changed locations with their camps to go hunting or fishing, to break trail means to go first. It means to pave a path so your group can easily and safely pass. And that is what these women do. They break the trail for the benefit of the rest of us. They go first and they lead the way. Now, of course, a promotional campaign is only that. It doesn't actually change the statistics of women owning or operating businesses, but here's the beauty of a promotional campaign. Change is instant. Without a delay, the images are out there. It will take longer for women to take up 50% of all CEO positions and for women to take up 50% of all leadership positions. And it shouldn't take as long as it has, but it also won't happen immediately. But change in how we represent women can happen overnight. 
We can actually change what the future looks like. And we've seen that images have a powerful impact on our perceptions and on our aspirations. Depending on what we show and how we show it, we can either create or feed into our shared and conscious biases, or we can combat stereotypes and create role models. Now, besides a woman, I am also an economist. And also from that perspective, diversity just makes sense. A 2017 report by McKinsey Global Institute on the power of parity suggests that steps to decrease gender inequality in the workplace may benefit Canada's economy by $150 billion by 2026. And if steps were taken to eliminate the gender gap entirely, that number could rise to as high as $420 billion. Now today, I wanted to share why I think this is an important campaign and what my goals are to achieve. But I also want to share what I have learned from it. When you celebrate women, you celebrate everyone. And I count myself very lucky because I get to interview the women and I get to pick their brains and learn from them. And I have learned something from every trailblazer that I have interviewed. So when I hear their stories, it becomes very clear to me that these women deliberately support other women as part of their work. For example, Rosalind. She's a brilliant artist and owner of the Down to Earth Gallery here in Yellowknife and she actively supports female artists as part of her work. 100 of the 125 artists that are represented in her gallery are women. Arnalini, she was the first female director at the city of Yellowknife, and she's actively looking for an indigenous student to mentor because she believes indigenous women should have a spot at the table for future land negotiations. And there are more women, and I really hope that you will take a moment and read their profiles. Now, last month, I was asked to speak at a conference about disruption in business development and about our trailblazers. And by the way, I hope that one day we can all see the irony in how we talk about equal representation qualified as a disruption. But once I convinced myself to say yes to that event, I was going to talk about the trailblazers as the real disruptors. But in preparing, I realized that I was a disruptor too, by making these women more visible. So in closing, I want to invite all of you to be a disruptor with me and make women more visible by saying yes when you're asked to step up, when you're asked to sit on a board or speak on a topic. Just say yes and figure it out later. Make women more visible by supporting a woman that you work with to speak up or to step up. Make women more visible if you, like me, have the opportunity to represent people and groups. Be conscious of the balance that you end up with. And if it isn't 50%, it isn't balanced. Make women more visible and nominate a trailblazer, whether that is for this campaign or one in your own organization. We all know women who deserve to be celebrated more. So in your life, who is a trailblazer? Who breaks the trail and has inspired you? Who is a leader and deserves to be celebrated? So let's all disrupt that status, status quo and let's push women past that 30% so that one day when my kids, I now have a daughter and a son, and when they ask me, Mama, what do you think of the management team that you work with? I hope I can say, great. I work with a truly balanced and diverse team. And just like in any other workplace, men and women are equally represented. Thank you. <laughs>